Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a fountain pen showdown for you. The two pens we're going to look at, we start with this one. This is a Conklin All-American Golden Walnut and it's a limited edition pen. The second pen is this one. This is a Jin Hao 9056. And yes, I know, don't they look very similar? What we're going to do, we're going to take a look at the pens. We'll do some measurements, some weights, a writing sample. Then I'll give you my thoughts on the pens and we'll give each one a score. So join me now down on the mat. Let's jump straight in. So here we are down on the mat. Let's take a look at the two pens. So the first one, this is the Conklin All-American in Golden Walnut, and this is a limited edition. The second pen is the Jin Hao 9056 in Green Sandalwood. Don't they look similar? I mean, really, looking at these here, the only real differences are the colours and the trim colours. Everything else seems very, very similar. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to walk through the body of the All-American, and as we go through... I'll highlight where I see things different in the Jin Hao 9056. So we start at the top. We've got a dome on the top. So it's very much a cigar type shape for the whole pen. This then tapers up until we get really about halfway down the cap. And then it goes straight. With the Jin Hao, that tapering, it's not as steep. So it's, it's a little bit more of a straighter pen all in all. The clips, they both use like a lever on the top, but the Jin Hao is very, very stiff. We'll just take a closer look at the cap. So I'm just going to turn it around. On the back of the Conklin, we've got the words limited edition and then the number, which is 1664 of 1898. And that 1898, 1898 is the date that Conklin was established. If we look at the Jin Hao, Again, I'm going to turn it around and on there we've got the words Jin Hao 9056 and Heritage. So a slight difference, very minor though, isn't it? The caps then step down to the body. The drop off on both of them seems the same. The body then, continuing with the Conklin, to me it's tapering down immediately and it keeps going slowly, gently down so we come to that domed end again. On the Jin Hao, I would say very, very similar. If anything, I would say it even goes narrower when it gets to the end. On the Conklin, we've also got here trademark Conklin, Toledo, Ohio, USA, and All American. Whereas on the Jin Hao, there's nothing. So, so far, we're talking really, really minor and superficial differences. Let's take off the caps. So with the Conklin, we go half, one, one and a half, just over one and three quarter turns for that cap to come off. With the Jin Hao, we go half, one, just over one and a quarter. So definitely nicer with the Jin Hao because it takes less turns for that cap to come off. So now we can compare the two nibs. Let me just move this one over. There we are. So we can get these side by side. I love the colour of the Conklin nib. It's that gunmetal colour so it matches with the rest of the trim. On the Jin Hao we've got a primarily gold coloured nib and it's got a little bit of silver decoration. And then obviously on both pens we've got logos and descriptions of the nib. So one difference between the nibs, on the Conklin we've got this crescent breather hole, whereas on the Jin Hao it's just got a normal standard breather hole. The Jin Hao, this is a medium nib. The Conklin, this is a broad nib. I wish you could buy the Jin Hao's with a broad nib because that to me is one of the things that lets it down. And yes, I know it's a standard number six nib, so I can swap it for another one, but it would still be nice to be able to buy that. Let's look at the sections now. So the sections, they look virtually identical. The only thing I would say that's slightly different is the Jin Hao to me seems to be ever so slightly wider. And we'll look at that when we do our measurements. Let's take off the bodies. So both of these are converter pens. So 
So there we go. Just get them lined up so we can see them. So the Conklin comes with its converter. So does the Jinho. So again, we're staying very similar. I would say to my eye, the Conklin converter looks slightly wider, but it's very much something that I can just see. Let me pop these back together. So let's talk cost. The Conklin was 166 Australian dollars. The Jin Hao 9056, 16 Australian dollars. So one tenth of the cost of the Conklin. And they look virtually identical. This is where some people might be saying, well, Gary, that Jin Hao, it's a copy. Why did you buy it? One of my views is that a pen is there to let you get ideas out of your head and onto paper. Doesn't matter how much it costs. The All American, it isn't cheap. And I wanted to know that I liked the body shape. And that's why I got the Jin Hao 9056 first. That let me test out that body shape to make sure it feels all right in my hand before I spend a lot of money on that expensive pen. And I've done this a few times with a number of other pens. I've bought the cheaper versions and that's then led me to that more expensive one. I'm gonna just fetch in my rule. We'll do some measurements. First pen we're going to look at is the Conklin. So there, in total length is 14.3 centimetres. With the Jin Hao, 14.3 centimetres. Uncapped with the Conklin. Uncapped with the Conklin is 12.9 centimetres. With the Jin Hao, is 12.6 centimetres. I think the difference here is with the nib because the nib on the Conklin is longer. So that would explain that difference. Posted with the Conklin that comes in at 16.7 centimetres. With the Jin Hao, also 16.7 centimetres. And both of these pens, there we go, I'm just going to give them a shake, they both post really well. If we look at the bodies, the width of the body on the Conklin is 1.52 centimetres. The Jin Hao is 1.54 centimetres, so ever so slightly wider. The caps on the Conklin, and this time as well on that Jin Hao, is 1.71 centimetres. Let's look at the sections. So the section on the Conklin, that goes from 1.09 up to 1.15 centimetres. On the Jin Hao, it goes from 1.17 up to 1.24 centimetres. So this is what I was saying about the sections being slightly wider. Let's pop these back together and I'll fetch in the trusty scales of measurement. So in comes the scales. Just slowly slide that up. So we're on zero grams. First one we'll look at is the Conklin. In comes the pen. 41 grams. Capillon, 11 grams. The Jin Hao, 40 grams. Capillon, 15 grams. So in total weight for each pen, they're about the same. Now we did see a difference there in the cap. I'm going to see if I can get the camera to shine down here. So if we look inside the Conklin, I don't know how well this comes out on the camera, there isn't really much in there. But when I look inside the Jin Hao, again, I don't know how well this is going to come out on the camera, there's a plastic liner going all the way through. So that would account for the additional weight. But really, yeah, they're very, very similar in weight, aren't they? So far, the pens have been virtually identical. Yes, I know, one's a medium and one's a broad. But that's the only difference. Let's take a look at our writing samples. Fetching my trusty notebook. Here we go. So this is a black and red notepad and it uses the Oxford optic paper. I try to use this paper for all my tests just so I've got a standard way of measuring by using the same paper and the pen and the ink. They're the bits that do vary. So the first pen we're going to look at is the Conklin. Here we go. There's a Conklin All America. What ink have I got in here? Well, I've got J. Herban Terre de Fue or Terre de Fue. I'm not 100% certain how to pronounce that last word. I'm afraid French isn't one of my strengths. If we look at this, this is, a, I would say it's like a ready brown ink. 
It's not 100% a match for the body of the pen, but to me, that doesn't really matter. It's near enough. And I thought, well, it's a different color. You know, it's not standard brown. And I like to go slightly weird from time to time. So let's do a writing sample. So here we have the Conklin All-American with a broad nib. I save the ink, J. Herban. Tear de few or fwee. When we actually see it writing, it's a lot closer brown. This to me is a problem with some of my samples. They always look slightly different in colour, don't they? It's not until you actually see the ink coming out of the pen that you get the real idea. But I like my samples because it just gives that hint. Drying times. So we go immediate, five seconds, 10 seconds. Doesn't seem to be much of a difference, does there? 20 seconds, well, look at that, it's gone from fairly wet to almost dry. Just in case this is a fluke, I'm going to go for 30 seconds. You know, still smudging very slightly, but it's a fairly fast drying combination, which is really nice to see. I'm going to do a writing sample, so I'm going to move the mic closer to the paper so you can hear the pen as it writes. So there's a little bit of feedback. I don't know if that came over the mic. Sounds like you're writing with a pencil, but I actually like that because I think that really adds some character to it and it makes it nice when you're writing. When this pen writes, it's glorious. It really is. It's a nice pen to write with. But, and this is a big but, this pen dries out so quickly. I think it's partly to do with the cap not having that liner in and with it being wood, you get a bit more air movement through the material. But if I put the cap on, like I have here, it's nice and well put on. If I left that for half an hour, the pen wouldn't write. I'd have to spend about two sentences trying to get it to write. Then when it does start writing, it's usually quite good. I have had some times though, and we'll look at that in a little while, where in the middle of my writing, it does dry as well. So there's definite ink flow issues with this. Now I've done all sorts to try and solve this. I've flossed the nib. I've checked the tines to make sure they're aligned. I've pulled the nib out. I've pulled the feed out. I have cleaned it with soapy water as well as then soaking it in clean water to get rid of all that soap. I've tried repositioning the nib on the feed. I just cannot get it to be consistent. It really is a shame because it spoils what is otherwise a really nice pen. One of the things I will try is I'm going to have to try replacing the feed and the nib, see if that makes a difference. But for this review, I wanted to keep it with what came in the box. Let's look to see if there's any line variation. So I'm just going to go pressing normal. And then with a bit more weight, we do see a little bit of line variation coming through. Obviously, it's a steel nib, so we don't expect a lot, but there is a little bit there. And it does write really nicely. Let's take a look at the Jinhao. So here we are at the Jinhao 9056. The ink that I've got in there is by Pilot. It's Irishizuku Shinryoku. It's a really nice green colour. I like my greens. And why I've got that in there, you can see a little bit of green in the body. And it's green sandalwood. And I thought, well, green and brown, they go together anyway. Leaves are green, aren't they? So that's why I've put this ink in here. We just reposition the notepad. So here we've got the Jinhao 9056, which has got a medium nib. The ink, Pilot, I'm just going to put Iro for Iro Shizuku, and it's Shin Ryoku. I think this ink looks really nice in this pen. 
Drying times. Immediate. Five seconds. Ten seconds. 20 seconds. Thirty seconds. Still got a bit of a smudge. One minute. So there we go. After a minute, we're nice and dry. Time now for the writing sample. So I'm going to reposition the mic. So as we can see, it's scratchy. You can feel that scratchiness. I have done a few passes with Micromesh. I need to do a few more just to get this sorted out. One thing I'm going to call out here, we did have a skip here. Now that may have been me because the rest of the writing was fine and I normally don't have any issues with this nib. So I say it could just have been me the way I was holding the pen. If you see the way I have to record in order to be able to get in and get all the cameras and everything in position, I'm really writing on a really awkward angle, which is not how I would normally write, but I'm going to call it out because it happened. We got a skip. Line variation. There's light. There's with a bit more pressure. So we do get a nice amount of line variation from this but then again it dries out now this is quite interesting in all my testing i've done with this pen now i've had this pen at least six months and this is about the seventh or eighth lot of ink i've had in it not had any problems with writing until i record today now one thing i will say and i'm not sure if it's related when i was doing the walkthrough i accidentally dropped the pen and it did hit a carpet so whether that's done something to the nib but up till now it's been a lovely writer it's just today because it wants to embarrass me it's playing up but such is life let me take this off then we'll give these some scores so what scores do I give these pens? Well, it's been really interesting because I really do feel let down by the Conklin and I have to reflect that in the scores. In terms of pen looks, the Conklin, oh, it's just so nice. It looks really nice. I love the trim. I really do. I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10. Pen looks for the 9056. It looks a bit plainer, doesn't it? The colour is quite nice, but it's the trim. You know, if we look at the shapes there, the Conklin is a far nicer shape. This just seems to be a bog standard goldy type colour. So in terms of looks, well, I'm going to give this one an 8. Writing experience. I'm going to fetch this in. This is Tomoe River paper. And what I do in my preparation for all these videos is I do spend some time. I write on various papers. The Tomoe River really is where I pull together all my thoughts when I'm starting the script writing process. You know, to me, it's a lovely writing experience when it writes. We get some nice shading coming through. Not a lot, but we get it there. It's a really nice ink to write with. But the problem is the flow issues. Now, on here, you can see a couple of places where it was running out of ink. And what I had to do was prime the feed to get to restarting again. It really does let me down with the issues with ink flow. And all this, well, it impacts the, the total score for both writing experience and ink flow. If I, start, if I pick up a pen that I know is inked, I want it to start writing straight away. I want to use it to get an idea that's in my head out of it and down onto paper. And if the pen doesn't write, I can't do that. I've got to take this into account when I'm scoring this. Every time I pick it up, I cannot write straight away. I have to fiddle with the pen, which means then my ideas, they could disappear. So as such, for writing experience, I'm going to give it 5 out of 10. And for ink flow, well, I'm also going to give it 5 out of 10. When it writes, it's nice, just not consistent. The Jin Hao. Just going to position this so we can see the page. So here's that same, that, that Tomai River. This is the 52 GSM. 
This is the Jin Hao. Now, apart from in my video here, I've never had a single issue with it writing. It's always worked really well. I'm calling out here, it's virtually a copy of the All-American. That is, that is yes, I know it's what I expected, but still, it's a very, very close copy. I like the fact it's got that pen liner because that does help when I open the pen, it writes straight off. It's got a nice, I'm seeing here, it's got a smooth flowing nib. As I said, there's a little bit of scratchiness to it, but that's very, it's very minor. And some people, well, they like that bit of feedback. So again, for me, I could actually quite enjoy it. I just want to smooth it off a little bit further, but not too much. I love the ink. It's green for a start, isn't it? I've had a number of different inks in this pen. As I said, I've had no issues with drying out, no issues with hard starts, no, no issues with skipping until today. I do like this as a combination though. And this is the ink that I normally put in this pen now. So as such, when I look at the scores for this, in terms of the ink flow, in terms of the writing experience, well, I give both of those an 8 out of 10. Because up until today, it's been really nice. Value for money. Well, let's look at the Conklin. I've got to be honest and take into account the fact that I have all the issues when I'm trying to write with it. Because a pen that doesn't write, as I've said, to me... It's not worth a thing. When it does write, it's gorgeous. Again, I'm trying to take that into account. That means I'm going to give this value for money. The best I can do is give it 5 out of 10. I mean, $166 for a pen that is not consistent in its writing. With the Jin Hao 9056, value for money. Well, as I said, up until today, I've had absolutely no issues with it writing. I take the cap off, the pen writes. I write a page, pen's still writing. No problems at all. But I've had them issues today. Even so, value for money-wise, this was only $16. $16. That is really affordable for most people. So in terms of value for money... Given the fact it lets me do what I want, it's a, an inexpensive pen. I'm going to actually give that 9 out of 10 because I really do think it's good value for money. So that means the total scores for these pens. For the Conklin All-American Golden Walnut with that broad nib, 6 out of 10. For the Jin Hao 9056 in this green sandal wood, 8.25 out of 10. And to be honest, I think that Jin Hao does deserve that. So my thoughts on these pens. Well, as I said, I'm disappointed with the Conklin. If I can get it where it writes straight away, without any skipping, without any hard starting, this pen, I've got to be honest, it will be a higher score. It would be more like a 9. As it is, as it came out of the box, very, very disappointed. Now, I have done some Googling, and there's a lot of people giving very similar feedback about the ink flow issues. So I actually think... It is an actual issue with the pen, as opposed to being an issue with my particular pen. The Jin Hao, really pleased with that. I enjoy writing with it. I enjoy the experience of writing with it. Not sure about my feelings with it being a copy, because, you know, I like pens where you can say they're inspired by. But looking at these, inspired by is being too nice. I think it is a copy. What I am thinking, though, is once I've got both these pens empty, I want to see if I can swap the feed and the nib from the Jin Hao into the Conklin and see if that fixes the issue. I might not be able to, but it's something worth experimenting with. And given the fact that, that the Conklin just isn't performing how I want it to, I don't see any problems with experimenting because, to be honest, how can I make it much worse? So that's my review of the Conklin All-American in Golden Walnut and the Jin Hao 9056 in green sandalwood. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What do you think about pens that are copies? Do you like them? Do you not like them? We've got to look at these, that Jin Hao 9056, it's one tenth of the cost of the Conklin. That's a massive saving. And in my test here, look at the difference, that Conklin, really not a nice pen to write with. The Jin Hao, it's a joy compared to that. Please drop your thoughts down below. I'd love to get your ideas on this and what you think about these copies. Please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like a video, every time you comment, well, it just helps with the YouTube algorithm. 
If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.